Oh, crikey, it's really happening, isn't it? Yes, Fallout 4 has been officially announced, and with a three minute trailer no less. I thought we were going to get a 10 second teaser and a check back at E3. Guess I owe E for a beer. Anyway, since the trailer went up, half the internet has been pouring over it frame by frame to see what they can glean about the game, and man, they found a lot. Here's a quick look at some of the stuff you might have missed, starting with the broader strokes like where, when and whom, then delving into possible gameplay elements. Thanks to the online community around Fallout, notably the Fallout subreddit, for pointing out loads of stuff I didn't see and making this video possible. Now, at this stage, you probably don't need me to tell you that Fallout 4 is set, at least primarily, in Boston, Massachusetts. There are plenty of landmarks like the Bunker Hill Monument, the State House, the Statue of Paul Revere, and Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox, which has now been turned into some kind of fortress or maybe a mini city. But by whom? Oh yeah, and the USS Constitution also makes an appearance, only some boy racer has added massive engines to it, probably along with a fat stereo system and some neon downlighters. Fallout 4 is looking a lot more colourful than previous games in the series, after all. Also interesting is Vault 111, which is a completely new vault not previously mentioned in Fallout lore. The trailer doesn't give much away, apart from the fact its entrance lies flat on the ground, so you rise instead of walking out of it, but the rest is pure speculation. Naturally, there was a lot of speculation. One theory is that Vault 111 was being controlled entirely by a master brain. No overseer, no security, no nothing. Only now the master brain has failed, meaning Vault 111 is no longer a viable place to live. Time to go. Inspecting the elements of the teaser site did reveal a hidden message saying PA system failure has occurred, shutdown of the master brain has been authorised, and all sensitive materials have been removed for security purposes, but I'd put money on that being a reference to the teaser site itself, not how the vault operates. Another theory is it's a cryo vault, keeping the inhabitants in stasis rather than having Vault 111 develop its own community while waiting out the radiation. This theory centres around the family we see in the pre-war portion of the trailer, so let's leave the where of Fallout 4 behind for a moment and move on to the when. A lot of people have been speculating on exactly how long after the war Fallout 4 is going to be set, fixating in particular on the trailer switching back and forth between the same house pre- and post-war. Look at this lovely family and their baby. This dude looks a lot like the guy at the end of the trailer. Are they one and the same, or are you the little baby that's grown up? Because that would put a very definite timeline on things, unless the theory about the cryovolt is, in fact, on point. It's all very interesting, and were it not for the fact you see the same family get atomized in the nuclear explosion a bit later on, I'd be inclined to agree. Sure, they're on top of Vault 111 at this point, so they might have been able to escape, but frankly I doubt it. A face full of nuclear detonation is notoriously difficult to survive. Sadly, that would also probably put paid to our cryovolt idea. Personally, given how a number of the buildings in Boston have been significantly redeveloped, as shown in some of these panning shots, I'd say Fallout 4 is set a pretty long time after the war itself. Sure, nobody's really bothered to sweep the place, but those are some pretty tall new builds. The abundance of colour in Fallout 4 gives the sense humanity is managing to actually rebuild itself rather than scrabbling around in the dirt. There's always the possibility Fallout 4 will jump back and forth between pre- and post-war timelines, of course, but frankly, I think it unlikely. It requires far too much narrative direction for an open-world game. So that's the where and when, but who can we expect to meet in Fallout 4? Well, where do we start? First off, it looks like the player character could be voiced for the first time, which would be pretty impressive, though not everyone online seemed thrilled by the prospect. Anyway, is that Troy Baker's voice? Let's go, pal. The Brotherhood of Steel doesn't appear to have gone anywhere if this power armor sporting chap is anything to go by. The mysterious stranger appears to be getting a look in, as does everyone's favorite DJ, Three Dog. Potentially. This shot here shows a poster for GNN or Galaxy News Network for whom Three Dog works. Has the network been re-established? Who knows, but as long as I can play some sweet tunes through my Pip-Boy while trying to sneak past some super mutants who seem to be hanging out by this bus, I'm happy. Interestingly, a bunch of the creatures in Fallout 4 appear to have gone through some changes. This Deathclaw has a spiny back, massive feet, and some fancy new horns, whereas feral ghouls appear to have been upgraded from plain unsettling to absolute nightmare fuel. This little guy, glimpsed very briefly, looks suspiciously like a Wanamingo from Fallout 2, only now it's got what appears to be a human face, which is horrible. Brahmin are also confirmed, though it seems they've been unable to get away from being pack animals for merchants. Bless them. Alright, so what else can we squeeze out of this trailer before the big E3 reveal? Most interestingly, there's evidence crafting could be a big focus in Fallout 4. 
The laser rifle and component parts laid out on the wall here gives the distinct impression of a workshop, but more importantly, there's this gun. That looks suspiciously like the top half of a laser rifle hastily taped onto a varmint rifle stock, so will you be able to cobble fantastical new weapons together in Fallout 4 above and beyond previous customization? I certainly hope so. The fact this power armor is undergoing repairs or even assembly is also promising. It's early days yet, but we could be looking at a pretty deep crafting system here. Better birds, protectrons, bubble heads, and oh yeah, a dog are all confirmed too. Speaking about the dog for a minute actually, it seemed to have some of the slightly unnatural animation given to a lot of creatures and characters in Fallout 3. Some have pointed out these people at the start run with a practically identical animation cycle to the NPCs we've already seen in previous games, so it seems Bethesda Game Studios hasn't eliminated that uncanny style of movement, at least yet. Some seem disappointed by that, personally I'm kind of relieved. There's something charming about the way characters move in Fallout, I don't think I'd feel quite the same without it. Anyway, that's about all I was able to squeeze out of the Fallout 4 reveal, but is there anything I've missed? What do you think about the timeline for the game? Got any theories of your own? Leave us a comment, and if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe for more from Eurogamer. Thanks for watching. Chris Bratt, this is Big Sky. It's finally, it's happening, XCOM 2. It's happening in November as well, like, that's really quite soon. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, this is really exciting. I know you're a massive, massive fan of XCOM, obviously. I am a pretty big fan, though not as, as much as you, I dare say.